Hello Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising. Welcome to my channel. It is such a blessing to be here with you. So thank you for being here with me for your January 2024 Tarot Scope. I am so grateful for the opportunity to connect with you. In the description box below, you will find links to information on personal readings, the Soul Good membership channel on Telegram, and ways to support the work I do here if you would like to explore any of those options. You will also find a timestamp if you would like to jump to the start of your reading. Please do keep in mind this is a collective reading, not a personal reading, so use your discernment and take only what resonates with you. If you find that something shared does resonate, please like this video and subscribe to the channel, comment below and or share this content as it tells YouTube that there may be something valuable here for someone else, which is a gift to this channel and others as well. And I greatly appreciate your support. January kicks off 2024, which is a number eight year, encouraging us to step into our personal power, to have faith in our own abilities, and to use them to their highest potential. This is what we're going to be looking at this month. Um, before we get started, Gemini, I do want to share that if you've been here before, this reading may look a little bit different. Um, I'm actually only going to be using oracle cards for this reading. I do have tarot out in the case that I need the additional support, but this is something that I really enjoy doing. I do it frequently in my membership channel, so it may look a little bit different, um, but I'm very excited to dive in for you. So let's see what might be showing up for you. Please, Father, Mother, Life, Christ, Universe, Spirits, Guides, Angels, our Cosmic Team, our Ancestors, our Higher Selves, tell us please about January 2024's overall energy for Gemini. Tell us please about the overall energy of, okay, thank you, and that one as well this one as well. Okay, thank you. Tell us please what new level of power, okay, yep, and inner strength is being ignited. Okay, thank you. That one as well. Are there any more? Yes, right there. Okay. What is gaining momentum for Gemini? this month. Okay. That one there as well. Okay. I feel like I need to shuffle again. So I will tell us, please, what is gaining momentum for Gemini? Thank you. And what advice or messages will best support and serve Gemini and their journey moving forward, please? What adv advice or messages will best support and serve Gemini and their journey forward, please? Okay, so Gemini, yeah, thank you. It's so funny because I was just about to say, um, I was getting this feeling, Gemini, that some of you may be very kind of stubborn um, toward advice. I feel like for, and this certainly may not resonate with everyone, but I feel as though for some, you may have either been receiving advice from perhaps other individuals in your experience or perhaps through your intuition, your, um, you know, your guides, your angels. And it feels almost like perhaps some of you have been either ignoring that or just outright denying it or, um, 
you know, not acknowledging it. Maybe it's something that you don't want to hear. Uh, I don't know why that's coming through, but I think it's quite interesting. Um, that often happens. So when I'm shuffling and cards seemingly don't want to come out, it's usually because there's a block. Um, at least that's how I perceive the energy. Um, so it's almost like there's a block uh, in the, how would I say, the openness, if you will, to receiving whatever information. And in this case, because we were asking for advice or messages that are actually going to best support and serve you. Again, I feel like there are some of you who may have either been receiving advice or will be or do through the month of January that you are hesitant to receiving or resistant to receiving, even if it is something that's good for you. Um, the other thing I want to share with you, Gemini, is that as I was preparing for your reading and shuffling the archetype cards that we're going to be using for this section, um, I did see the lover card several times. And I find that to be incredible, but it's simply because in the tarot, of course, you are represented by the lover's card. So I do feel that January for you, um, or at least some of you, is really about showing up for yourself. And certainly that's likely to look very different for each of you. Um, but I do feel for those that resonate with that, it is likely that you're being encouraged to show up for yourself, for your truth, for your soul's true callings, um, for whatever it is that you feel um, will be best for you moving forward. Okay. All right. Let's jump in with your overall energy for this month. We do have here truth be told. This is the number 14. Um, so it does feel to me, I don't know why I'm getting this and maybe this isn't for everyone, but I feel as though for some, there are either situations or people in your experience, perhaps it's even yourself, um, where there's this mask that has been worn. It really stood out to me. If you can see it there at the bottom, that mask really stood out to me uh, as soon as I flipped the card over. And I feel like the thing of it is, is if you look at it, it's a gold color. Okay, so I feel like whatever this mask is, whatever has been hidden or um, whatever facade has been worn has been about, um, or, or rather, let me rephrase, has looked good, right? And deceivingly so. It's kind of reminding me of like, um, you know, not everything that is shiny is gold type of thing. And I feel like there's something here where I don't know, again, I, it very well could be a person um, just based on the fact that this is a mask, like, like a, a mask of a face here. But I feel as though there's, again, <laughs> there's that energy I was picking up on um, before we dove into the cards about, you know, that kind of um, advice or messages or perhaps truths that are being offered to you, but perhaps you are or have been resistant toward, All right? Because maybe something has looked really good. And I don't, again, I don't know if this is a person or, or perhaps a relationship. Um, you know, maybe it's a um, business collaboration. Maybe it's a job or a living situation or something, but it feels like something has looked really, really good. Um, but perhaps not everything is as it seems. And if you were to open your heart to truth and to step into wisdom versus almost, it's almost like a control or, or perhaps like desire. If you were to step into wisdom Versus that, I feel as though you could see that truth very clearly. Because there's some kind of aspect of like not wanting to see truth for what it is. And I know that's not exactly something exciting to hear. Um, and again, certainly maybe this doesn't apply to everyone. I mean, it, you know, um, it is a collective reading after all. But 
I feel like there's a level of perhaps not wanting to acknowledge whatever that truth is because it will create some kind of instability, because it will create some kind of conflict or perhaps a change that you are not or don't feel ready for. Again, this can be about you, okay? It doesn't have to necessarily be about something in your external experience, like a place or situation. It can be something that you are hiding from yourself or a mask that you are wearing um, essentially towards yourself, right? Maybe something you don't want to see about yourself. But I feel that, you know, this month, these things may be trying to come through and to provide you with some kind of clarity. If you look there in the middle of the owl, there's an open window with blue skies. And even though, you know, it's very pretty here around the owl, um, they're not very clear. It looks a bit hazy, a bit foggy. Whereas this looks more, you know, blue, clear skies. Not clear, clear, obviously, because there is some white clouds there, or the, pardon me, there are some white clouds there, but it, it, it certainly looks more clear to me than what's going on here. And so there's this element of like opening up, you know, to truth and to clarity and to what it is that needs to be received or acknowledged, okay? We also have here fork in the road, the number 13. This is interesting. We go from 14 to 13. Um, I feel like for some of you, perhaps coming into January, I don't know that you'll necessarily feel like this, like all the way through. But for some of you, I feel like coming into January, you may have felt like you were taking steps back um, to some degree or another. And perhaps you may have, I don't, I don't know why it feels like this, but there's almost this level of confusion. Like, why do I feel like I'm stepping backward? Okay. And perhaps it has something to do with not seeing this truth for what it is. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at this, you know, kind of, uh, what is he kind of like a, I don't know what he is, you guys, I'm going to be honest, but he's kind of like a, a monkey looking creature. Um, but it, he almost looks as like he has a mask on. And I feel like that could be what it is, right? It's almost like whatever this hidden thing is may have, you know, how do I say, contributed, thank you, to why you may be feeling like you've taken a step back. Now, the other thing I want to point out before I dive a little bit more deep, uh, more deeply into this card is that on the back of this animal here is an owl. Um, owls do represent wisdom, okay? They are also nocturnal, so they see in the dark, which means, you know, essentially, um, from a more spiritual perspective, that it's, you know, being able to see through darkness, through shadow, right? To see the truth in the dark, to see the truth in the shadow. And oftentimes, we ourselves do not want to acknowledge our own darkness, our own truths. Sometimes it's our trauma or our pain that we that that limits us or or, or feel, makes us feel limited in doing that. Um, you know, sometimes we just aren't we feel we aren't ready for it or we fear it. Um, you know, our our lower egoic drives can certainly get in the way of that as well. But, you know, again, there is this owl here and I feel as though it is tr like there is wisdom that is trying to be shared. Um, there's also on this animal here, um, a, an apple. Um, there's also what appears to be almost like a dream catcher. Um, there's also, I know this may not be what it is, but it reminds me of a turtle here on the antlers of this creature. And the oracle is also in its saddle, which means you have everything you need. You have all of the tools to be able to choose what path is in your highest good, what path is for you. Not only that, but this animal here is white, which 
that color represents purity. So it's coming from a pure place, right? Um, and I feel the, the wisdom that that is. Uh, certainly use your discernment as things, you know, come through your intuition or things you feel may come from, you know, God, source, universe, whatever you call it. I call it God um, or your angels or your spiritual, the spiritual hierarchies, you know, using your discernment is incredibly important. But based on what I'm seeing here, there is there's some kind of wisdom that I feel is trying to come through from a wise, pure, knowledgeable um, place. Okay, um, so, you know, with this fork in the road, and here's this creature that, you know, appears to have this mask on, and it's like wanting to choose which way to go. And perhaps this mask, this thing, is saying, oh, go this way. Perhaps it's, you know, again, kind of attributed to your lower egoic drives, that's trying to say, go this way, go, you know, this is the path when really you know which way you're meant to be going or what decision you are meant to be make, pardon me, meant to be making. Uh, so I feel like, you know, January could bring for you that need to make a decision, which again is incredibly fascinating to me because the fact that you're represented in the tarot by the lovers and the lovers in the reverse can be this energy of indecision. Okay, and the lovers, of course, being a card of choices, needing to make choices. So, you know, I feel like this, this is the position that you may find yourself in, in the month of, of January is, you know, truth trying to come through, wisdom trying to come through, knowledge trying to come through to guide you to what is best for you, even if that's not something that you yourself from, from your human, let's say, perspective, think is right for you. You know, a lot of times what we think is right for us is actually really not. <laughs> okay. So I feel like that's, um, I feel like that is something that is, is going to be prominent for you this month. And 13, so let me, let me back up for just a moment. The number 14 uh, reduces to five. And in numerology, as I was sharing a little bit about earlier, is five is a number of adversity. It's a number of conflict. It's a number of change. It's a number of instability, of movement or fluctuation. And the number 13 reduces to four, which is often actually about stability. It's about creating firm foundations. And with that being said, it's like, there has to be change. There has to be this period, if you will, of instability in order to create firm foundations. And it may not seem like it at first, but ultimately, whatever choice it is you're making, you know, the path that, that is that you're being encouraged toward the one that is, um, you know, full of wisdom, that's full of truth, that's full of um, knowledge is the one that is meant to help you to ultimately create stability. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But I feel, you know, whatever it is that's taking place for you, whatever, whatever this is, that this truth that's trying to come forward is, is doing so or, or is unfolding in the way that it is to ultimately create firm foundations for you moving forward. Okay. And over time, I'm not saying that'll happen like tomorrow, um, you know, or perhaps not even by the end of January, but over time that, you know, moving from truth even if we don't like it, will create security and stability over time, right? We have, oh, good golly. So we have the number 12. So we go 14, 13, 12. And you guys, the, I, I feel very deeply that what this is speaking to is that breakdown to build up right? It, again, it may feel like you've taken three steps backwards, but it is because whatever you could have been building on before did was not stable. 
okay? It was not stable and needed, it needs to be shaken up. It needs to be broken down in order to create a breakthrough, in order to build firm foundations. So this 12 card here is a change in the wind. And I feel, again, like I was saying, in order to create, like, like there's these truths that want to come out in the hopes that you utilize the tools that you hold within you, right? Your intuition, your connection to God, um, the wisdom that you hold, the knowledge, okay? In order to create change. And this card, I mean, it looks, this wind here looks very, you know, a, a bit chaotic. And so I do feel that it may feel that way. It may feel like you're caught in the middle of a windstorm, but it is meant to be shifting things for the better, right? It's almost um, like going through the rain to see the rainbow type of thing, right? I also feel, so there, there is, which is quite small, um, but my attention's been drawn to it. There's a snail on the back of this uh, zebra here. And I feel like this change, again, like I, like, like I was picking up on earlier, I don't feel like it's going to happen overnight. Okay? I don't feel that this is going to provide, let's say, immediate results. I feel as though there are seeds that are being planted that could come to fruition later. Um, but that snail is bringing through the energy of like slow moving, right? Things being a bit more slow, the changes being a bit slower, even if the, oh, let's say the weather seems very turbulent or chaotic. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I'm noticing is that this zebra, there, there's nothing around him, okay? There are no trees, there are no buildings, there are no mountains, there's nothing that is like blocking that wind, okay? And again, I feel like this speaks to that breaking down, you know, stripping things away, and being kind of left bare, if you will, in order to build anew. And again, you know, 12 reduces to three, which is about growth. It is about, you know, this, I mean, essentially it's this completion of a phase, um, but, it, but it is about growth. And I feel that is the point, right? The point is to be stripped down in order to grow, in order to complete a phase, in order to leave a part of your life behind. I mean, even if you look here, the the zebra, this, this um, steeple, I guess you could say, that it's carrying, it's not an entire house, it's, it's a portion, right? There's, there's no luggage, there's no, you know, anything else. And so I do feel that, again, it's leaving a, a many things behind in order to start fresh. But very interesting. So, you know, again, if you feel like you've taken steps backward, I feel like it's meant to build you, build you up again. Okay. Let's look at what new level of power and inner strength is being ignited from within you. We do have the knight in the upright or light attribute position, loyalty, romance, and chivalry, a love of honor. You know, I, re I really feel here, Gemini, that this card is coming through because I feel like there's a level of, of honoring truth of honoring self, you guys, <laughs> I have a saying that's one of my favorites, um, not because I love it, um, but because it is so true, 
Uh, but you know, there's, there's the saying that's like the truth will set you free, but first it's going to hurt a lot, like a lot, a lot. And it's probably going to piss you off. <laughs> okay. And I feel like this plays into this energy, right? Because I feel as though, you know, that new level of power or inner strength that's being ignited is that love of honoring truth, of honoring and yourself, your, your, your own internal deep truth. And there are so many times that we think we know ourselves, but as you go inward, as you peel back the layers of trauma, of wounding, of programming, you know, of all of these things that we've experienced throughout our lives that aren't actually our truth, we find out that we actually aren't in alignment with our truth. I was someone who thought that, um, I was certain that I knew who I was. And as I embarked more deeply on a spiritual path, and started to go inward and started to, to move through and learn how to navigate and heal um, some of my traumas, I realized, oh, actually, there's a lot that I don't know about myself. Because what I did know about myself and what I perceived to be true about myself was actually coming from those lower egoic drives or my trauma, my wounding, my programming. And the more in alignment with your truth you become, the more you honor that. Okay, even if it does um, hurt, even if it does piss you off, you know, when you first kind of uncover that truth, you realize um, how much lighter life feels, how much lighter you feel when you start moving in it and when you will accept nothing less. Okay. It brings a certain level of peace. So I feel as though with this night and that energy there of a love of honor and even loyalty and even, I mean, when I see romance, the word I'm kind of seeing actually is union. So, you know, I feel like it's that love of honoring self, that love of loyalty to truth, to honor truth, and to come into union with truth. Okay, again, here we have this, you know, white horse, which again, is that purity, right? There's a heart there, following your heart, okay? We also have the beggar in the upright or light attribute position confronts empowerment at a level of physical survival, awakens the spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem. Yeah, so you know what I feel like? So I'm just going to read this here because my eye was drawn to it. Um, the shadow attribute of this card or the reverse position of this card says dependence on others to the exclusion of effort. Um, and I feel like what is being ignited within you is your own authority over yourself, not needing that mask, if you will. How do I say this? Yeah, okay. Um, you know, the, the, I feel like there's like a false belief that perhaps, and, and perhaps this is something you have, um, dealt with or experienced previously or perhaps currently where you may have felt like you have sought out approval from other people, have been dependent on other people, have allowed other people to have authority in your life. And perhaps that was due to physical survival or survival, being in a survival mode, right? Um, living from a trauma response. Perhaps that's where this has come from. But I feel like, again, like, like what is being ignited within you is standing on your own authority, right? And the fact that we have all of this energy of like truth and wisdom and you have everything you need within, 
I feel like it's that spiritual authority that you hold within you. That is meant to build upon your trust in yourself. That's meant to build that loyalty with to you. Okay. And again, you know, not to like bring up my own story, but to give you something to relate to. Um, for the longest time, I did not trust myself. I did not honor myself because I was always foregoing myself. Right? Um, I was always, you know, dependent on other people um, and seeking out that approval and wanting to be accepted and, you know, all these things. So I was essentially like <laughs> um, people pleasing all the time. And so because I was always giving away my giving away my power to other people and not trusting my own desires, my own needs, um, and, and I wasn't honoring them, I could not trust myself. And so I feel like this is what is trying to be built up within you um, or, or what is being ignited, that power, that strength that's being ignited within you throughout this month. Yeah. I mean, this is reminding me of uh, the Five of Pentacles in the tarot, which is very much, you know, being left out in the cold and in the deck that I have here, the Light Seers Tarot. The Five of Pentacles is actually a woman um, in a room with a door that is closed, but the key is on the inside of the door. So at any point in time, she could open that door. It's just a matter of, you know, realizing what you have at your disposal, truly. Very interesting. You also have here the fool in the light attribute or upright position, fearlessly revealing emotion, helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy. So it's interesting, again, because there is a mask here yet on another card for you. Um, and beneath that mask is the fool who is actually weeping. And it does say here in the shadow, um, denial of your emotional truth. And so again, I feel like, you guys, you can't make this up. I really feel like that power or inner strength that's being ignited from within you is the ability to take off the mask, whatever that looks like in your experience, to take off that mask and get down to the nitty gritty honesty, which again, isn't always comfortable. It really, really is not always comfortable. Okay. You know, I also feel that with the fool, there's this, this, this element of, you know, having faith in, in, you know, being able to take off the mask, to trust it, to trust yourself, to trust God, to be able to be vulnerable. I hope that makes sense. Okay. That, 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 that is also coming through quite strongly. And, you know, just to add a little bit more to this, I feel as though because I felt drawn to share that denial of your emotional truth in the shadow, um, I, I do feel like whatever's going on, however this is unfolding for you, Gemini, I feel like a big part of this is about your own deep inner healing. That I feel like there are some deep wounds that, or, or traumas, or perhaps programming that I feel um, is, is you're, yes, thank you. You're being given the opportunity to work through that, I feel. Which is why all of these things are being ignited. Which is why these masks keep showing up. Which is why the the word like truth or, you know, um, like honor and, and all of these things are showing up the way that they are. Well, yes, come on, you guys. We have also for you the wounded child 
in the light attribute or upright position awakens compassion and desire to serve other wounded children, opens the learning path of forgiveness. Yes, I feel like there, you, you guys, if this is for you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I, how do I say this? I don't mean that you necessarily know exactly what your wound is. Okay, perhaps that is true. I'm not saying that you necessarily know exactly what mask you're wearing, though that could also be true. But I do feel like there's something that you know about yourself that you have not wanted to acknowledge or something you know about your circumstances or your situation or relationships or something that you have not wanted to acknowledge truthfully. And again, perhaps there are some who have shared advice with you or some kind of messages with you to try to support you, um, to give you, let's say, an outsider's perspective. But I feel like there's been a resistance to that. It's really odd, you guys, because this does not happen to me very often. My hands are kind of feeling sweaty. <laughs> um, and this is, this is not a common occurrence for me, even in my everyday life. Uh, so I think that's really odd because I feel like for some of you, there's a lot of like anxiety around whatever this is. There's, a, I mean, it's like, yeah. <laughs> um, so in, again, I feel called to share just part of what's here in the shadow attribute. Um, it says resist moving on through forgiveness. And I feel like these are, the, I feel like the reason why I've been called to share some of these shadow attribute um, qualities or characteristics is because I feel like these are things you're working through, right? In order to ignite that light within you. All of your cards here are in the light attribute position because I feel like the level that's being ignited is the light. And I feel, you know, bringing forward these shadow attributes it is highlighting for some of you, again, who resonate with this, where this is coming from. Okay, so I feel like some of you may know that there are how do I say like there's a need for this open heartedness and perhaps even compassion because that's been brought up a couple of times now for whatever it is that that this truth is whether that be compassion for yourself and choosing what is best for you and having compassion because maybe there's some guilt or I don't know some kind of something around choosing that path for yourself or if it's compassion for other people finding forgiveness for yourself and others. Okay, but I feel like it's trying to move you into a new way. Right, trying to move you into the light, out of the shadow and into the light. And, you know, again, here's the thing. Like, think about it this way, you guys. If you have been staying in darkness for a long period of time, and, I, and I'm thinking about this, or rather, I'm coming at this from a very, like, literal perspective, a very physical perspective. If you have been in darkness for a long period of time, and someone, you know, opens a window or, or shines a flashlight on you, you feel blinded. It's overwhelming and even painful to your physical eyes. And understanding deep inner truths about yourself or about your experience also has a, it has a similar effect. It can be painful and blinding even to some degree, right? And you've got to kind of give yourself the time to adjust, to acknowledge the light and to adjust to it before that pain or that um, like blind, uh, that blindness pass. All right. So this is what I feel like um, is being ignited within you, Gemini. Let's take a look at what is gaining momentum for you. Yeah, we have the crumbling. What are you clinging to? Absolutely. Like I said, it 
felt so this energy up here felt very much like the tower in the tarot right things being broken down to be built back up to create like a uh what is the word i'm looking for yeah shifting the foundations shaking things up bringing everything back down to you know it's bare bones if you will in order to build back up and this is every time i get this card it doesn't matter what reading i'm doing almost every single time i should say it comes through to me like the tower because it's very similar in in its energy and in its appearance both um so i do feel like what's gaining momentum for you again with all of this truth energy honor honor energy choices energy changes energy um you know i feel like what is what is gaining momentum is the what is the word i'm looking for Yeah, is what is not serving you coming to light? Okay. And and, and here with the, with this tower kind of energy, again, that may be why we have 14, 13, 12, or why it may feel like you have taken steps backwards. Because again, it's trying to break everything down. And I feel like this has gained momentum or will be gaining momentum through the month of January for you, right? Really kind of getting things um, shaking things up so you're no longer clinging to or holding on to, um, you know, perhaps it's traumas, programming, wounding, um, or perhaps even, you know, certain relationships or situations that are simply not serving your highest good, that are not in alignment with your truth at a soul level. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I, I should, I'm feeling called to bring forward that you know there there are times where i feel like we have all or at least a, a good portion of us um have gotten comfortable in our pain because we've learned how to navigate there we know even if we're in survival mode even if it's not good for us we know how to navigate that and stepping outside of that into the unknown into the wilderness seems or feels like death it feels like it feels dangerous it feels super freaking risky right because we've already experienced so much trauma so much pain so much wounding or or whatever it is that we feel like okay well well i know how to move here even if it's not good for me i know how to move here but if i step out of this i don't know what that is and what if i'm exposed to worse what if it's worse than what i'm already experiencing so we sit, we, we, we stay there. Um, I think this showed up. Did this show up? I'm not sure. Maybe mm, this might have been, I might be um, recalling a membership reading I did. Uh, but it's reminding me of the song Happy by NF. Um, and essentially what he's saying in that song is, um, how, do, how does it go, please? living in my agony, watching my self-esteem. <sighs> I can't think of it right now, you guys, I apologize. Um, but essentially what the song is saying is like, I'd rather, you know, rather live in my agony and, and, you know, live in this place of, of very low self-esteem and these things that I really, I know are not good for me because I don't know how to be anything else. Is essentially what the song is saying right i don't know how to be anything else i don't know who i'd be if i was anything else and i'm comfortable here so you know i feel again like what's gaining momentum for you is shaking that up because it's trying to get you out of that comfort zone whatever that is for you and to take you somewhere else somewhere new We also have here Mintonkin, longing for home, belonging, and the original light workers. I feel like what's gaining momentum for you is, so it's interesting, um, Gemini, for me, home is not a building. It is not four walls and a roof. There is no place that is home. For me, from my perspective, home is you. Home is your soul. Home is your truth, 
right? It is this essence of your true being that you carry within your physical body. Because if you're at home in yourself, you can be at home anywhere. It doesn't matter what building, it, it, it doesn't matter, right? So I feel like what's gaining momentum for you is that finding home within yourself, right? How do I say this? It feels like there's almost this, how do I say, uh, it may feel like you are searching for something, but you don't know what it is. I feel like that, that feeling, which I'm, I'm not even sure how to describe it. Um, that feeling is what may be gaining momentum, right? Feeling like you're searching for something, but even, even if you don't know what it is, feeling like there's somewhere you need to be like, like that you belong, that's better than wherever you are now. And, you know, I feel like that speaks to that home within you, right? Establishing that home within yourself, feeling like you're at home within yourself, like you belong in your own skin, like it is your home. That is what I feel is gaining momentum for you and why all of this is happening. Because I feel, you know, God again, source, universe, whatever you call it, is wanting you to recognize you, is encouraging you to find yourself, to be at home in yourself, to be comfortable in your own skin, in your truth, okay? And again, this is, I mean, you know, I just feel like, in addition to that, you know, it's trying to get you to stand on, on your own, um, to not, how do I say, when you find that home within yourself, as I was speaking on a bit earlier, you, you don't need a certain place to feel comfortable. Okay. And you're not reliant on external validation or acceptance because you're so comfortable in yourself that you don't need it elsewhere. And so not only, and maybe this is, you know, not again, maybe this won't resonate with everyone, but I feel, you know, there's an element here where this is gaining momentum so that you find that comfort in yourself, that confidence in yourself. You feel safe and secure in your own skin and do not seek external validation or approval, right? You find satisfaction within your own being right? You find approval within yourself. And I feel like this is why, an, another reason why all of this is unfolding the way it is. We also have here, warrior woman, have you answered your deepest calling? Yeah, again, right? Like I've been saying, that deep inner truth, your soul's true essence. Because there are times that this card comes through as a deep inner calling, as in your soul is see, calling you to, to, to go to a certain place, to take some kind of action, you know, something to, of that nature. But in this case, I feel like it is more geared toward or aimed at answering your deepest self, your soul's true essence, going inward and finding that for yourself, uncovering that, discovering it for yourself. And, you know, how do I say this? Living there. I, I hope that makes sense. And here's the thing. This woman here has this sword in front of her. She has armor on, you know, and, and I feel like that speaks to um, cutting out the things that are not in alignment with that deep calling, um, protecting yourself or creating boundaries against the things that are not in alignment with your soul's truth, with your, with, with your true self from, again, from a soul level. And if you don't know what that looks like, I feel like this is a call for you to do that inner work, right? To, and I know that seems maybe very vague, um, especially if you're not someone who has embarked on this journey um, to any, we'll say serious, uh, w w with any seriousness. 
but you know, I mean, there are plenty of places you can start. You can start with meditation. That, that would be my first um, piece of advice. If you don't know what that, what, you know, yourself on a very deep level and you have felt like this has been resonating with you, I would start with meditation, a, a, a daily meditative practice. Whatever, however that looks for you, of course, is, is going to be specific to you. Um, but I definitely feel like that could be beneficial. But, you know, I mean, the other part that I feel would be to, you know, face some of these truths and, and be very honest and transparent with yourself and allow yourself to be uncomfortable. Because here's the thing, you know, I don't know, how do I say, it's, it's kind of, um, I don't know, there's almost this element of like preparing to go to battle with yourself. And what I mean by that is your lower egoic drives you know, your trauma, your wounding, these, your, your ego, these things are going to have this kind of, how do I say, they're going to kind of put up a fight, if you will. And I don't say that to discourage you. Everyone has experienced this. It's just a matter of being willing to stand there for yourself, to show up for yourself, because that, that that trauma that wounding that e that those lower egoic drives are not what is serving you it's not your truth so you've got to kind of want that truth about yourself you've got to kind of want you know that um that home for yourself more than the fears that you're going to have to face okay again i'm not saying that to discourage you we have anybody like we've all been there okay we have all been there but it's like you've got to be willing to go to battle with yourself right with, with your mind um with your trauma with your wounding you've got to be willing to face those fears head on because the only way the only way out is through right and what i mean by that is through whatever those fears are, whatever those traumas are, whatever those woundings are, whatever your darkness is. That's the only way out. Right? You may hear others say it um, like the only way out is in. <laughs> okay? So I do feel like this is gaining momentum for you. But again, I feel like it's to put you in a position where you can stand very strong and firm in yourself. And are willing to release things that aren't serving you, are, are willing to create boundaries where it's necessary, where you're willing to choose yourself and your truth um, over, again, like self-approval, or pardon me, over external approval or, or validation to be sovereign, okay? So what advice or messages will best support and serve you and your journey moving forward? take time to breathe thank you angels i breathe with ease knowing you're here yeah i think you know part of the advice for you gemini is to just let yourself i mean i know it goes without saying but like let yourself breathe right i i feel like there's how do i say you may have felt like through um a portion of your life or you know um perhaps even more recently like you've been holding your breath, right? It, it feels very survival mode or trauma response to me, um, like holding your breath, walking on eggshells, that sort of thing. Um, and I feel like the advice here for you is to just let yourself calm. Again, meditation may be very, very helpful if you resonate with that. Um, I also feel like this is, is a message for you to know you are not doing this alone. You are absolutely not doing this alone. You do have support. You do have help. Your angels are with you. Okay? We all have at least one guardian angel with us at all times. 
So you are never alone and you can always ask for help. But the angelic hierarchies, the spiritual hierarchies, those exalted beings will not force their help on you. They could throw signs on you, the signs and synchronicities and advice and messages and intuitive hits and whatever it is all day long, L like literally all day long. And they can orchestrate things to try to help you to take help or, or, or to, to, to encourage you to take help. But you don't have to do that and they will never force it upon you. Right? So it's knowing that they're there. And it's okay to just give yourself a minute, you know, whatever that looks like, to breathe, to process, to, you know, release, to just be. I feel like saying that, I feel like somebody listening is like, I don't even know what that means to just be. It's like, I, I don't know why. I, I just feel like there's someone who's like, what does that even mean? And I, and I, I feel like the best way to say that is to sit, like, just be, to just take up space, <laughs> to be in whatever emotion, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're going through, to just be and breathe, not having to do anything. And I'm not saying like this is a, you know, pass to, to, to like um, go into your cave and not come out. Okay. Um, because I don't feel like that's healthy, but I do feel like it, it is to take time to simply take up space to just be right. Like, like I often use this, um, with my membership and on some of my Facebook posts where it's like, just a human being, right? Capital B E dash I N G, like just a human being existing without having to prove anything or do anything. So I feel like that could be helpful for you. You also have here study and learning. Thank you, angels, for allowing me to see that every day is a learning day. With this coming through, I do feel like for some of you, it could be helpful for you to take up some kind of spiritual study. Um, what I mean by that is finding a spiritual path um, that is most in alignment with you and your and what resonates with you that can help you to understand spiritual development, spiritual evolution. Okay, that's going to look differently for everyone. Um, there are many different paths out there. Um, one that I have found resonates with me is esoteric Christianity, anthroposophy. Um, that for me, the more Western tradition is something that speaks to me very loud, um, very loudly, if you will, it resonates very deeply with me, but there are certainly Eastern traditions as well. Um, but just understanding how we evolve, how we develop could help you. I feel. On the other side of this, I also feel that one of the messages coming through with this card is that there's, how do I say, the acknowledgement, thank you, of everything that we experience, good, bad, ugly, the things that we experience are meant to teach us. They are meant to evolve us. And even though they may be uncomfortable, painful, traumatic, horrific even. They are meant to teach us something. They are meant to show us something. Okay. So I feel as though, you know, even if you feel like your life has been, you know, um, turbulent, if you feel, you know, you've struggled, there's this understanding or, or, you know, perhaps how do I say this? You guys, I don't want to sound insensitive. Um, but okay, let me, let me back up. I don't want to sound insensitive. And if you have experienced, you know, a very traumatic, turbulent, painful life, or you've experienced a lot of those kinds of situations in your life, I'm very sorry. 
that you have experienced those things. I'm very, very sorry. If I had it my way, there would be, you know, minimal suffering, um, you know, um, but certainly we wouldn't evolve if everything was comfortable. We wouldn't evolve if everything was, was, you know, constantly joyous and easy. And, you know, so I feel like a message here for you is the acknowledgement of that, right? These things don't happen, like, like these things happen for you in order for you to evolve, to heal, to grow. And, you know, again, I know that that can be very difficult to process. I know in my own experience with some of the traumatic things that I have went through, it was very difficult for me to accept that and to acknowledge it and um, to shift perspectives. But once I was able to, it did relieve a very heavy weight from me. And once I was able to kind of play the alchemist and turn my pain into something positive, okay, so not what did this take from me, but what did it give me? Once I was able to start doing that, I didn't feel so heavy. I didn't feel so weighted. I didn't feel so burdened. I didn't, I mean, it, it took time. Okay. Like I'm not, I'm not, you know, saying this for you to expect that it's going to be easy or that it's going to be fast. But once there's, you know, we'll say consistent work in these areas, it does start to feel tremendously lighter. Okay, so again, I'm not trying to be insensitive because I know that, you know, many of us out here have experienced horrific things in our lives. And I'm not trying to invalidate those for anyone at all. Um, but, you know, recognizing that we can learn from every single moment that we have experienced does help to take your power back from those situations. We also have here signs from heaven. Thank you, heaven, for sending me reminders of your presence, which is interesting because I was saying, you know, your angels, your, your your spiritual guides can throw signs at you all day long. I feel like they probably are. Um, for some of you, it is in your dream time, whether that be at night or during the day. Um, I feel like some of you are perhaps receiving feathers. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be physical. Um, but I feel like you could have been seeing lots of feathers. Um, or perhaps you did find some in the physical world or will through the month of January. But I do feel like your angels are letting you know that they are with you, that you are not alone. Okay. Um, I don't know who this is for, and this may be for someone very specific, but I feel like for some of you, you could even through the month of January, like hear your name, right? Like hear your name, um, perhaps like when you were alone or... You know, maybe you're not alone, but you ask those around you, like, did you just, did you just call me? Um, I, I don't know who that's for, but um, I feel like for if this is true for you, I feel like this could be a sign um, from your angels. Of course, use your discernment, okay? Um, take it back to God or source, you know, again, whatever you call it. But I do feel like for some of you, you are receiving things via your dreams, um, you could also actually, for some of you, you could also be just getting kind of epiphanies, what feel like epiphanies, like, ah, oh, that makes, this makes so much sense. Like all of a sudden, almost out of nowhere, um, that could also be, I feel reminders for you. Um, I'm actually also getting, you may be seeing 1111, um, and that could also be signs from your angels as well, or signs from heaven as well. 
and again, take it back to God, right? If that was you, angels, if that was you, um, you know, guides, ancestors, again, you know, whatever you resonate with, show me another sign that is clear and evident, okay? So again, you know, I feel like this is just speaking to that for your, the, the advice portion or messages portion here for you, Gemini, I feel like it's speaking to the fact that you are not alone. Yes, this may feel incredibly challenging for you. Yes, this may be painful for you. You may struggle with it. You may be very, very uncomfortable. You may feel like you're, you have to hold your breath. You may feel like things are turbulent, that things are falling apart. Um, but there's an acknowledgement of that struggle. There's an acknowledgement of the fact that this is happening for you to be able to learn and grow and evolve and that you are absolutely not doing it on your own. Gemini, that is what I have for you for the month of January 2024. Thank you so very much for being here. I greatly appreciate you sharing your time, your attention, and your energy with me. It has been a pleasure to read for you. This month for you looks to be one, again, of breaking things down to build back up again, however that may resonate, okay? But know that these things are happening for you. Know that there is light on the other side. Know that you do have everything you need to be able to move through this and navigate it. So long as you trust yourself and you trust God, uh, again, whatever you may call it, to move you from where you are to, to where is better um, for you is more in alignment with you and your highest good and your truth. Take care of your growing, evolving, strong, courageous, and beautiful, beautiful soul. Have a beautiful month wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Peace be with you and within you, and I hope to see you in another video. Bye.